All right. It's interesting to see we have a lot of speakers uh, talking about cancer therapy, integrative cancer therapy, non-toxic therapies. It's uh, obviously an area we really need to key on as we're watching the incidence of cancer, all cancers, certainly increase in this westernized world. Um, I will, for people who have not heard me speak, I will tell you that my board certification is actually emergency medicine, but I've been involved in a lot of research, um, as Michael said, since 1991. And I developed a drug for obesity that uh, we, I actually just started a, a pharmaceutical company and we're going to begin clinical trials. But three years ago, uh, when, I, when my mother passed away of metastatic lung cancer, uh, it spurred me on to shift my area of research to cancer. And I have doggedly pursued uh, cancer research since then and, and have certainly found some very interesting um, and unfortunate events uh, occurring around our cancer research. And let me start by saying that I'd like to first define cancer according to the American Cancer Society. According to the American Cancer Society, cancer is a group of diseases characterized by uncontrolled growth and spread of abnormal cells. As you're probably going to guess, I'm going to redefine that. I think that's an incorrect diagnosis. In the past 40 years, we have minimally extended survival for most solid tumors. The most, uh, it's not uncommon for new drugs to reveal spectacular results by curing cancer in mice. And that's exciting because, as we know, cancer in mice is a big problem in the United States and we really need to cure that. But unfortunately, much of what we see in mice does not seem to apply to humans. So we have to ask this question. Are our models through which we research cancer in the laboratory valid? Well, how do we typically study the animals uh, or the mice? The most common way is the uh, human tumor xenograft. And what we do is we take cell lines of cancer from an individual. It's been sitting in culture medium for years and years, and it's mutating and mutating. And then what we do is we take millions of those cells, and we inject them usually subcutaneously, in the mouse. And then what happens is, hopefully, it takes hold and we get a local growth. But that's a local growth. Most commonly, it doesn't metastasize and it doesn't even kill them. So are we surprised when we give a chemotherapeutic drug and it shrinks that local growth and we're excited that we cured cancer in mice, but then it doesn't seem to afford more than two months to the human? Well, sometimes we use transgenic mice. And what that means is injecting genes from e either another mouse or even another species into the embryo of that mouse. So those genes code for perhaps immunodeficiency. So they're more susceptible to getting cancer. But is it cancer? Once again, most commonly, we'll see a local growth. Now, we are starting to do some orthotopic transplants. And that more closely approximates cancer. And with an orthotopic transplant, you actually cut out some of the cancer from a human and then transplant it to the mouse. Well, that's a little better because we're using some of the donor tissue, but it's more painstaking to do that. It's, it's obviously more timely and it's more expensive. So it's not the most common way. So the question is, for the most part, are we studying cancer? And I, I will challenge that and say, Generally, we're not, especially when we're seeing such wonderful results in curing cancer in the mice, but not in the human. Just to remind you of the definition, according to the American Cancer Society, cancer is a group of diseases characterized by uncontrolled growth and spread of abnormal cells. Now I want to redefine that. Cancer is actually the interaction between abnormal cells and its natural environment that results in uncontrolled cellular growth. And so when we take the cells from a cancer individual and we put it somewhere else, those cells are no longer communicating with its natural environment. It's not cancer. It is very important that cancer continues to signal its natural environment. That is the definition of cancer. It is cancer and its interaction with its natural environment. So. 
what we'll need to do in a little bit is to explain what is that env environment. We have spent most of our time and money attacking cancer cells while ignoring the environment which communicates and governs the actions of these abnormal cells. So what is the cancer environment? The cancer environment certainly includes bone marrow. And then we can break the bone marrow down into the immune system. There's the innate immune system and there's the acquired immune system. Well, so certainly the older literature tells us that it's really the acquired immune system that's mostly involved in preventing and even curing cancer. But the latest literature is suggesting that that's not true, that it's the innate immune system. It's the neutrophils and the monocytes becoming macrophages and the antigen presenting dendritic cells and the natural killer cells that are really responsible for preventing and curing cancer. Well, also in the bone marrow are the endothelial progenitor cells. Now, cancer cells actually recruit the endothelial progenitor cells from the bone marrow and they bring them into circulation so they can set up new vessels or angiogenesis. And as you'll see, platelets also play a role in angiogenesis or the development of new blood vessels. Well, also part of the environment is the extracellular environment. And what I mean by that is right outside the cancer cells. The cancer cells actually upregulate their hydrogen ion ATPase, and they pump hydrogen ions out of the cell. And they make a very acidic extracellular medium that promotes angiogenesis. And finally in the environment is the energy supply. Without that energy, which we all know cancer feeds on glucose and uses glycolysis, if you cut off that energy supply, you seriously affect the natural environment of the cancer. Well, before we get into um, other therapies, let's, let's analyze, does chemotherapy significantly extend survival? Well, there was a large meta-analysis that was published in the British Journal of Clinical Oncology in December of 2004, entitled The Contribution of Cytotoxic Chemotherapy to, to Five-Year Survival in Adult Malignancies.